In this video, I'm going to run through the FAQs on the Ticket website of 2023. I'm going to try and do each FAQ pretty quickly. So this is like going to be a very short version uh, of the FAQs. For detail, read the website properly. Okay, let's begin. Where are the ticket locations? Ticket Motorbikes has offices in Ho Chi Minh, Dalat, Da Nang, and Hanoi. So we're covering pretty much all of the country except for the very north in the Ha Yang area. Um, but basically, um, we can get bikes up there too. So wherever you want to rent a motorbike, there is a chance that we can get a bike there. So it's worth sending an email at the very least, even if the location is not directly on our website. Do you refund for early returns? We refund early returns on everything. And the idea behind this is really for fleet management. We want customers to book the maximum amount of time for their rental. And then if they return early, we refund the days not used. This is better for us and the customer than extending by one day, extending by one day, extending by one day. First of all, each time they extend, we have to redo the maths. And the second thing is extensions can cause us to miss another booking uh, where we were expecting the bike to be returned, but it wasn't. What's your policy on returning late? Late returns are a really big issue for this company because our bookings tie together uh, pretty closely. So if you start trying to extend your motorbike rental or you just don't show up, you have to realize you could be ruining someone else's holiday. That is not a good thing to do. So we do have various different policies depending on how much damage you're doing to the company and to uh, future rental. Uh, some fines in place which range really between $50 and $150. You really must respect other people's bookings. And again, that's why we return uh, all fees for early returns. What if I want to return in a different city from my original booking? Returning in a different city to your original booking is also quite a big issue for us because it takes time for motorbikes to move between locations. So on email, if we see a booking um, that we think is very tight between two cities, like there's not enough days to get between those two cities, we'll email the customer back and confirm what sort of rider they are and that kind of thing. We have big fees if you do show up in the wrong city. It's really disrespectful for the company and just something you shouldn't do. If you know you're not gonna make it to your return location, email as soon as you figure this out, way in advance if possible. Can I cross borders on a ticket motorbike? Crossing borders between Laos and Cambodia is possible, but post COVID has become complicated and difficult. Basically it is possible, but it's not consistent. Sometimes customers were getting rejected, we don't know why. So as a sort of larger company, we can't say to people, yeah, you can cross borders because sometimes you can show up at the border, you get denied, you come back 24 hours, 24 hours later and they might let you through. So to get around this, what we've decided to do is just sell off our older rental motorbikes um, to people who want to travel across Laos and Cambodia. So we'll sell it to you and then we'll offer a buyback as well, um, which is the value of the bike, less for rental. It depends, sometimes we won't have a buyback either. Um, Thailand, we're pretty sure is still not possible. So whatever you do, I don't think you can go to Thailand. What if I crash the motorbike? Crashing motorbikes are on rentals is actually pretty normal and we're very used to this. It's no big surprise. You don't have to feel guilty about it. It's just routine uh, work for us. What I will say, having just said that crashes are pretty common, Vietnam, the road speeds are very slow. So crashes are common, but people tend to walk away again. From our perspective, a damaged motorbike is a damaged motorbike. We have mechanics, we can fix it extremely quickly. Most people opt for the damage waiver, so they don't even have to pay for it. That helps us because we don't have to uh, build quotes, which takes time. You just return a bike as normal and we'll fix it without having to charge you. Obviously, if you don't have a damage waiver, we need to build a quote. So that can take a little bit more time on return. Keep in mind, um, if you're on a big bike like a CB500 or even just an XR, if you do do major damage to the bike, it's nice to send us an email because then we have a chance to source the parts in advance. Do you provide insurance? Ticket Motorbikes does not provide insurance, but we do have a damage waiver that covers damages to the motorbikes. In terms of insurance for yourself or third party insurance, you need to be getting this from home, your home country basically, or an insurance company that you trust. Send them an email to make sure uh, that they cover you riding a motorbike in Vietnam. Do I need to book the motorbike in advance? Booking a motorbike in advance from Tigit is extremely important, um, especially in high season, which sort of ranges between September uh, through to April. We run out of motorbikes incredibly quickly and we do not have the money or the office space or the number of mechanics 
available to just buy more motorbikes. We have a limit as to how many motorbikes and customers we can process. We even end up with queues in our shop sometimes. And there are so many customers that arrive in Vietnam and think they can just click their fingers and get a motorbike from a decent company. That is not the case. We will run out, all the other reputable companies run out. You really, really need to book a motorbike in advance. Do you provide helmets? At Ticket Motorbikes, we provide free second-hand helmets. These are sort of Vietnamese style. They're definitely better than the budget shops out there or the, the local shops on the road that often provide baseball cap helmets. But I personally wouldn't ride around in them. Um, so you either, if you do own a helmet at home, bring it. Just put it in the suitcase. It's super simple. Um, we rent out ECE certified road helmets for pretty cheap. Or you can even buy an ECE certified road helmet for about $65, $70. So we have the free helmets all the way up to ECE certified helmets. But basically, if you have something at home, bring it with you. What happens if the motorbike breaks down? I don't even know what it's just, doing. Just put the new one back in. There's no cover, just tie it out. I'm not sure the new one fits though. It's an exhaust pipe. Of course it fits, but it's, it's all the same the right thing. Gap. Is the piston going to smash into it? I didn't expect no, this no, one to be back, broken, you know? dude. Take a motorbike's bikes do break down. We are not the perfect company with the perfect mechanics. Uh, and it's a very long distance between Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi. Things do go wrong. Sometimes it's the bike's fault and the company's fault. A lot of the time it's the driver's fault. Uh, bad driving will break motorbikes. But ultimately, uh, in a breakdown, um, it's a communication between the company and the customer to try and get them back on the road again as quickly as possible. This is identifying whether the bike can be fixed out there on the road or whether we need to start talking about trying to get a replacement bike out to the customer. Don't be fooled. It's a long way. Things go wrong and you need to be an adventure traveler with the capabilities to work with us and with mechanics to deal with a broken bike if that's the unfortunate situation you find yourself in. Yeah, uh, do I need to change the oil at all? I take it on the small bike, so anything 150cc and below, we ask the customers to change the oil every thousand kilometers. This costs roughly $5. You're not just changing the oil though, the mechanic will also check over the bike, tighten the chain, uh, that kind of thing. So a thousand kilometers is quite a lot, but it allows the bike to stay in good condition as it goes up the uh, country. On the big bikes, uh, over 150cc, we say to customers not to change the oil. That's because they're using synthetic oil that doesn't need changing, but you should still be tightening the chain and performing basic maintenance on the bike as you go. Where things go wrong is customers think they're like cars where you can just drive it as far as you like and never need to do maintenance. Motorbikes fundamentally are not like that. They're pretty high maintenance machines, especially over this sort of distance. And you should at the very least be stopping by mechanics to oil the chain. Uh, you should be checking the oil regularly. You should be checking the coolant regularly. You should be checking your uh, tire pressure regularly. All these small things will help avoid disasters and breakdowns. As I said, a lot of the breakdowns simply caused by customers not checking the motorbike. The motorbike just slowly fails over time. Customer doesn't identify anything. Yeah, you end up with a cat catastrophic failure. Do you provide USB chargers on the bikes? USB chargers are a pet peeve of mine because power packs are so cheap and so easy to put around or near to where the phone is mounted on onto the bike. USB chargers always fail. I can't find any with decent quality. They put pressure on the electrics of the motorbike, pressure on the battery. If your bike has a starting issue and you go in there into a mechanic shop with a USB charger, the mechanics, first thing they're going to do is just remove it. So no, we don't provide USB chargers. In my opinion, you shouldn't be adding anything extra to a little motorbike battery in the first place. These are not big BMW GSs. These are, most of our bikes are 150s. Even the CB500 is not a bike where you want to add millions of accessories to the battery of the bike. Just get a power pack and be done with it. How much luggage can I carry on my motorbike? Luggage is a really funny issue uh, that we see as sort of regular motorcyclists. Really, the bikes carry a maximum of 15 kilograms of luggage. If you start to go above this, then you're just changing the geometry of the bike and the way it behaves. The front wheel gets very light. Uh, the bike becomes wobbly, especially if you're doing top boxes with a high center of gravity. Motorbikes are not designed for huge piles of luggage. Get rid of everything. We have a few videos on it. 
and really get yourself down to 15 kilograms or less. Um, but the answer to the question is all of the bikes can be piled up with luggage if you really wish to do so, but you're responsible for the racks, uh, snapping racks, that kind of thing, especially on the small bikes. They're not designed for big loads, so take responsibility if you decide to do something like that. Do you have a service to ship a bag to my end destination? Shipping bags uh, between the ticket offices. Well, we are desperate for customers to get rid of their load and to not overload the motorbikes. It's better for the customer, better for the bike, it's safer, it doesn't destroy the suspension and the shocks. So we encourage you to send a bag uh, between our offices. At the moment, we're charging $20 per bag, but the price keeps changing depending on the shipping companies. And uh, basically, we ship it to your final destination and, and it, it's magically there by the time you return the bike. It works very well. What happens if the motorbike is stolen? Theft in Vietnam is basically entirely the customer's responsibility. The reason for this is every hotel will bring the bike inside the building or have a parking lot. Every restaurant will have security guys. Basically, once you arrive here, you'll see there are security guys everywhere and you've got to use them. We have a video on how to park a motorbike safely in Vietnam. So because there's so much security, the only reason or the only way to get a motorbike stolen is by just abandoning it on the side of the road. And much to my surprise, people do seem to do this. They abandon the bike and walk off, especially in uh, backpacker areas to go drink a beer or something. If you use parking lots, you will not get a motorbike stolen. That's a fact. But beyond that, you can also uh, buy Samsung tag or the Apple Air tags as well. You can hide these on the bikes and it would theoretically be a great way to trace down a stolen bike. It's also worth pointing out the bigger the bike, the less likely it is to get stolen. For example, we've never had a CB500 stolen, but we've had many Honda blades stolen. That's partly because the customers with the blades tend to be more reckless, but it's also, it's just a super easy bike to steal uh, that will then blend in, you know, you can sell it for parts, sell it anywhere really, and it's gonna blend into the local environment. It's much harder to go flipping a CB on the black market. Basically be responsible for your bike and you will not get it stolen. Can I put my motorbike on a train in Vietnam? The trains in Vietnam before COVID were super easy to use and a great way to skip out some of the less exciting um, areas of the country. Post COVID, the train is very expensive and pretty slow. Like you put the bike on the train, it doesn't go with you anymore. Uh, and it can take any number of days to arrive. There's no way to know how long it's gonna take. So really, we have a video on the train uh, that I've made recently, but basically you only use the train to finish your holiday. Either it's pre-planned, you're telling us you're gonna return in some strange location, and we might say, okay, you can do that, but you've got to use the train to send it back to ticket, or we'll use it in the event of crashes where customers don't want to continue. We can direct them to a train station. But for most people, the train is not really a viable option anymore. Can I put my motorbike on a bus? Buses in Vietnam are interesting because they tend to be quick. Uh, the motorbike can go with you. They basically put the motorbike under the bus in the storage unit, but this is illegal. So we can't advise that this is something that you can do. The companies that offer this service sort of pop up and disappear uh, randomly because basically what they're doing is illegal activity. So it's not something we can recommend. But yes, there are areas in particular, there's one Phong Nha to Ninh Binh or Phong Nha to Hanoi where uh, backpackers can find a bus and throw on uh, anything up to a Honda XR onto the bus. It's not something we recommend you do. You, they might damage and destroy the bike as well. Again, something that exists, but uh, be responsible if you decide to go down that route to skip out a road. Uh, do you offer discounts? Do we offer discounts at Ticket? Basically, we have zero tolerance on uh, offering discounts because in the end, any discount you ask a staff member then has to get forwarded up to really me. And I don't want to sit there making discount decisions for the rest of my life. So we just have zero tolerance. It puts pressure on uh, staff. It's uncomfortable. Um, so no, you're not going to be able to negotiate a discount uh, at this company. Every now and again, we might run a promotion if we have too many bikes sitting around but those are decided and set in advance. It's not something you can just show up and ask for. Can I use my passport instead of a cash deposit? Passport deposits we will occasionally accept if it's start and stop in the same city. 
but it's something we're really not comfortable with and employees might deny you doing a passport deposit. We have various internal requirements that we follow for passports. Basically, we don't like it. Um, we much prefer you just follow the usual credit card pre-auth deposit um, that, we, that we use. It's much safer for you. It's much safer for us. Um, it's not a good thing to hold on to someone's passport, basically. If I cancel my booking, do I get a refund? Cancelling bookings in advance is no problem and we tend to be very flexible with just letting it slide. In fact, the deposits you pay here are pre-off, so they expire and come back to you anyway. We don't actually charge them. However, if you're depositing on a big bike and it's caused us to move that big bike from one location to another location and it's, it's basically directly cost us money, we will try and charge you for that. But I would say 95% of people cancelling bookings, especially if it's in advance, then uh, we're happy to just refund you in full, no problem. Do I need a license to rent your bikes? To drive legally in Vietnam, you need to have a driver's license from home. This is a motorbike license and an international driver's permit, an IDP. If you do not have these, you are driving illegally in Vietnam and you must accept the consequences of that. Uh, our ticket for 150cc and below, we will turn a blind eye to licenses because that's the way this country tends to operate. We're not happy about it, but that's pretty normal here. For anything above 150cc, we will enforce uh, you to have a license and an IDP. We will not rent to you if you don't have one. Why should I trust ticket? We're a company that is at the top of Google. We've been around for quite a long time. We have a lot of bikes. If you look at the website, you'll see bits of software hidden behind it, fleet management. It's quite a creative company we've built. We've got great mechanics um, and we're a company where we're charging um, enough money where the mechanics are just directed to fix everything. I don't micromanage the mechanics and say, oh, you shouldn't have replaced that or try and save money here. Uh, the requirements of our mechanics is to make the bikes as perfect as you can. Because in the end of the day, with the amount of bikes we rent out, what costs us money is the admin time of dealing with breakdowns. That's very costly to the company. So we want the bikes to not break down under any circumstance. It's, it's so damaging for us and the customer. So mechanics, they really are told, fix everything. We charge the money that we need to be able to fix everything. And um, that's a very different story, I think, to the sort of backstreet mechanics um, in the backpacker streets where they're operating on a shoestring budget and they've got to think very carefully before they replace or fix something on their bike because they're just operating with such small margins. That's not us. What is the difference between Chinese and real Honda? So the word Chinese uh, is really just something that exists in Vietnam. What it actually means is very low quality bike. It doesn't mean it's made in China necessarily. It just means it's a rubbish sort of fake brand bike, if you like. So for example, you have real Honda wins. They don't exist anymore, made by Honda. And now you have DTEC Honda wins made by DTEC. Well, who's DTEC, right? Uh, and there's hundreds of these little companies. So a real Honda is a bike that's made by Honda Vietnam or Honda Thailand or Honda Japan or any of these things. And Honda service centers in Vietnam will service the motorbike, which makes it so you've got a great service with real parts, uh, all of that. So that's the bike we provide. But at the same time, there's Honda copies, Honda made by whatever random company. If you took one of these to a Honda head shop, they would reject you because it's not a Honda bike. And at the same time, they're very cheap. Uh, wobbly to drive. Um, they might say 100cc or 125, 150, but they have, they have no power at all. It's just random numbers on random bikes by random companies. That's what I mean by Chinese. You don't want to rent one for your holiday. They're just, even if it works, it's just not pleasurable to drive. What is the best motorbike to travel Vietnam with? In my opinion, the best motorbike to travel this country is the Honda Blade. <laughs> it's the cheapest, it's the most reliable, if you're good at riding, it has huge character. I mean, watch our training video uh, that we released uh, from our Hanoi stuff. You can wheelie it, you can jump it. There's no terrain this bike can't do. It's just a set of wheels where you can do absolutely anything on the bike and so cheaply and reliably. My most popular vlog style video to date is the one where I went around the Northwest on a Honda Blade with friends. Super simple, super fun. 
The second is the Honda XR. The reason for that is it's comfortable. It looks like a real motorbike, drives like a real motorbike. You get the feeling of just driving across Vietnam on a motorbike. Now you can go up into the CB500s and big bikes like that, and that's great for, um, let's say, experienced riders or people doing two up. But are they the best motorbike for this country? In my opinion, no. Most people can't drive them uh, well enough in this country with all the sort of traffic and chaotic rules here um, to utilize the bike properly. Having said that, if you're an experienced rider, yeah, get a CB. What gear should I bring with me? Uh, in my opinion, you should bring everything that you have from home, unless it's sort of full levers. Basically, you have to consider it's very hot here. But it amazes me how so many people have gear at home and they don't bring it in their suitcase. I just don't understand it. Should you drive around in shorts and a t-shirt? In my opinion, no. Should you drive around in full levers or ADV gear where it's going to be too hot and you're just going to take it off? No. So I think you should look at our website and the kind of gear that we uh, sell which really is all designed to be nice and airy, uh, MX gear. And if you have this gear at home, bring it with you. Otherwise, you should budget a bit of money to buy some of the safety gear that we have. Do you have an accessories shop? Uh, at the moment, it's under the name of chronics.com. Uh, and if you click on an individual item or SKU on that site, it will tell you the location that it's stored in, Ho Chi Minh, Da Nang, Hanoi. Uh, you can make an order on the site and ask for it to be shipped to your pickup uh, location. But there are certain items where we try and stock them in every office, especially the sort of armor style items um, that we think people should have on their holiday or it should be available for them to have. What is the perfect season to travel Vietnam? In my opinion, uh, it's probably October because the weather is good throughout the country and that's also in the north the best season in terms of rice paddies. But we have a full article and a video on the weather in Vietnam and the main thing to take away from it is that the country, the seasons don't align up. There is no perfect uh, time or worst time even to travel this country. The south, the middle and the north and the very north all have completely different seasons at different times of the year. In my opinion, you should uh, just decide your dates and then look into each area of the country and which area of the country is going to suit your dates the best. Because in the end, every single month in this country has an area of the country that will suit it. For real though, this is actually one of the best views I've ever had in all of my travels around the world. Seriously nice. Is it easy to find hotels in Vietnam? Hotels are one of the reasons why this country is so easy to travel. There are so many hotels at all budgets, all throughout the country, uh, from $5 up to you know, $200, $600. Um, they're just absolutely everywhere. I recommend using the app Agoda, uh, or you can use booking.com, but basically you just book uh, your hotel on there. When I'm driving, I tend to search for my hotel around lunchtime, because then I can see where I'm gonna finish for the day. Search at lunchtime, book for that evening, super simple. Is it easy to find gas in Vietnam? Petrol stations are everywhere in this country. It's really not a problem. And if there's no petrol station, you'll find that the locals are selling petrol out the side of their houses in little bottles. This is also okay. What I would say is I recommend trying to avoid filling up from locals selling petrol if you can. You should try and use the big gas stations. But basically a signal that there's gonna be no gas stations is local selling out the house. So wherever you go, and I, if you watch some of my YouTube videos, I've gone to some very remote places. I've never had to carry extra petrol with me. And I'm going on a dirt bike with a very small gas tank. But locals, they always have you covered. Is the traffic dangerous? Is the traffic dangerous in Vietnam is an interesting question. So when you arrive here, uh, you'll be horrified really by how busy and chaotic it looks and you'll probably be terrified even. But as soon as you get on a motorbike, you realize just how slowly everyone is driving and you just blend in with the buzzing motion of the roads here. What you can do as well is book a lesson uh, from one of our instructors. We have a few uh, in Ho Chi Minh and some in Hanoi just to sort of get yourself into the rhythm, the flow of how the traffic works here. But basically, it looks way more dangerous than it actually is. Is it safe to travel Vietnam? One of the reasons motorbiking Vietnam has become so popular is because of how safe and easy it is. And this is down to the locals. So if you have a crash or a problem in the countryside, the locals are so helpful. 
that uh, we can communicate with them and basically get you out of any disaster. Yes, there is petty crime here. Uh, for example, stealing phones in the backpacker streets or there's security guys everywhere because if you abandon the bike on the side of the road, it will disappear pretty quick. But it's all petty crime. The Vietnamese will go out of their way to make sure you're safe and comfortable uh, in their country and enjoying it. And in fact, a lot of them will come up to you and say, how do you like my country? And when you give them good feedback, it really puts a smile on their face. The Vietnamese people are wonderful. Uh, and this place is safe and that's why motorbiking in Vietnam has become so accessible and so popular. How can I find the best route to travel Vietnam on? Well, the thing is with routes in this country is there are so many different options. A bit like a ski resort, you can come back here every year and do a completely different route. There is no one perfect route, there is no one worst route really. So. With that in mind, don't worry about what you could have done or what you should have done or what you've missed. Just drive at your pace and enjoy what it is that you're doing. Having said that, we do document what I feel is the best route from Ho Chi Minh to Hanoi. And you will notice what we have on our site is quite different from what you might see on the sort of generic backpacker blogs or um, places like uh, Vietnam Coracle. And really the reason for that is it is my job as a motorcyclist uh, to go out there and do every single road in an area of the country, A, B, C, D and E, and then I will decide which one is the best. And I will circle around uh, an area to find the best road. Uh, whereas a backpacker and one of their blogs, they'll just travel this country once and they will say that's the best route. But basically, especially when it comes to the north, there is no best route. Just really follow our site. We have uh, some blog articles on where we think you should go and make a plan. Don't worry if you don't keep to that plan and just enjoy the country. How long does it take to drive from Ho Chi Minh to Hanoi or vice versa? If you were to put Ho Chi Minh to Hanoi on Google Maps, it's something like 48 hours, which is very short. In real life, to drive Ho Chi Minh to Hanoi on good roads, so not the highway, there's no point coming here to drive the highway. On good roads, it takes 10 days driving all day, every day. So basically, if you have 11 days, you've got 10 days of driving with one rest day. 15 days, you've got 10 days of driving with five rest days. So a normal backpacker will take 20 to 25 days. That's 10 days on the motorbike with 10 to 15 days doing sightseeing and tourist activities. When it comes to the north of Vietnam above Hanoi, this is a further three weeks. So the northeast one week, Haiyang area one week, northwest one week. Sure, it can be done faster, but that's the pretty normal uh, situation. Ho Chi Minh to Da Nang, so that's the south to the middle. That's sort of four to seven days. Da Nang to Hanoi, that's sort of four to seven days. Put those together, well, that's sort of 10, 10 days driving. People underestimate um, how far it is, and they put uh, the directions on Google Maps, um, and then they try to keep to that. But basically, as a tourist, you're stopping, you're drinking coffee, you're taking pictures. Uh, you stop to rest your ass, you don't tend to keep to Google Maps pace. So everything Google says you need to add a couple of hours on top. Where's your favorite place to drive in Vietnam? My favorite place in this country has got to be Dalat for driving or just the routes around Dalat. It's partly because I live in Saigon, so I have off-road routes, Ho Chi Minh to Dalat, Nguyen Nha to Dalat. I have the whole area covered, but basically, Dalat is a way to escape the scorching heat of Ho Chi Minh. It's a lot of pine forests. It's got really good traction and the jungles can get really, really remote. Um, and you can just get so far off the trail, um, which is awesome. This is the FAQs of 2023. Uh, I hope it was helpful. Uh, any questions, please send us an email if there's something I've missed.